what comes to your mind when you hear the term mobile? Basic mobile phones, smartphones or tablet PCs must be coming to your mind. Now think of learning. What is learning? Learning is enhancing your knowledge. Generally, we uh, read something or we interact with knowledgeable people to gain our knowledge. Now, combine the terms mobile and learning. What can you make sense of this word mobile learning? Mobile learning is using small devices to enhance your own knowledge or using them for the purpose of learning. Let's get into little more details of mobile learning. India is the second largest mobile phone user in the world. Mobile phones are being used not only in the field of education in our country, but in the field of agriculture, in the field of medical sciences also. Government of India and NGOs are taking initiatives in producing mobile learning content. They are not only being used in the field of education, but they are also being used in the field of agriculture, in the field of medical sciences. Many organizations are also recognizing the work done by different people and NGOs in the field of mobile learning. Let us see some definitions of mobile learning. Any activity that allows individuals to be more productive when consuming, interacting with or creating information mediated through a compact digital portable device that an individual carries on a regular basis, has reliable connectivity and fits in a pocket or a purse. The next definition is given by Clark Quinn, which says, the intersection of mobile computing, that is, the application of small, portable and wireless computing and communication devices, and e-learning, which is learning facilitated and supported through the use of information. This definition is given by Advanced Distributed Learning, which says, leveraging ubiquitous mobile technology for the adoption or augmentation of knowledge, behaviors or skills through education, training or performance support while the mobility of the learner may be independent of time, location and space. If we sum up these definitions, we come to a conclusion that mobile learning is not to do only with dissemination of information. It is to do with consuming the content, which means interacting with the mobile devices to learn from them. Using those mobile devices to communicate with others because mobiles are basically a communication device. It can be also used for generation of content. That is when we take pictures or when we record any audio sounds, it is nothing but generation of content which can be shared using the communication devices with people who are around you, which ends up in generating of more content. This is basically is what is the idea of mobile learning. Let's take a look at features of mobile learning. They are mobility, ubiquity, connectivity, opportunistic and collaborative. Mobility is nothing but portability of the device. The device is being small can be carried from one place to the other. Mobile, which is a learning tool, it fits into the pocket of the user. Now let us see what, how we can use the feature of mobility of a mobile device. Because the mobile devices are mobile or are portable or can be taken from one place to the other, the instructor or the teacher can put their content onto the mobile devices. That content can be used by the learner when they are on the move. If they are traveling by buses or trains or by public transport, they can use that content, they can read the text, they can listen to the audio, they can see the videos. The next feature is ubiquity. Ubiquity means anytime and anywhere. If you refer to the previously discussed feature, which is to do with mobility, because the content is mobile, the content goes along with the learner. That means as a repercussion of that, the content is available to the learner anytime and anywhere. That's the beauty of the mobile learning being ubiquitous. We have seen two features of mobile learning. Now let's move on to the third feature, which is collaborative. Collaboration is very important for learning and nothing greater than mobile devices can be available for the learners to collaborate with each other. Mobile devices, as you know, are always available with the learners. Nowadays, the university campuses, colleges and even public places are going on Wi-Fi. This makes it's very cheap for the learner to access the content. Learners can co interact with each other without spending much money. They can capture content, they can share pictures or they can share learning modules also with each other 
online. Learners can share different resources with each other using Wi-Fi connectivity. Now being instructor, what is it that we need to do to enhance collaboration? Instructors need to design such activities which will enhance collaboration or it will give an opportunity to the learners to enhance collaboration. Now let us see the next feature which is opportunistic. Opportunistic means grabbing the opportunity using a mobile phone or using any mobile device and using it very creatively. Maybe for creation of content. I would like to share an example with you. A couple of months back, I had read about this example. There was a school of hotel management who wanted to give an assignment to their students. When these students went on vacation to their native places, they were asked to shoot the recipes which were cooked by their grannies or their mothers or neighbors who cooked very well. When these students went back to their villages, they did exactly the same thing. After shooting these recipes, they transferred these recipes into the database. Can you imagine such a huge database it would have been? So many recipes got documented which were never documented before. Nobody knew about those recipes before. That is the power of mobile learning and that is the power of it being opportunistic. Instructors or teachers need to create such opportunities for the learner so that they can use their own mobile devices for creating content. Let us take another example here. If there is a history teacher who wants to take their students on an educational tour visiting some historical monuments or maybe a, a museum. The teacher can ask the students to take pictures of those historical places or the historical monuments. The students can take these pictures using their mobile devices or tabs or whichever other mobile device they are carrying with them. They can actually use those pictures in their projects. Can you imagine how much satisfaction it would be giving to the students? Thus, this feature of mobile learning needs to be exploited by teachers as well as students. We have come to the last feature of mobile learning which is connectivity. Connectivity means connecting with different people. Using this feature of connectivity, you can connect with your peers, with your teachers and also experts. These experts can be placed anywhere in the world. You can still connect with them. Connectivity enhances collaboration. It enhances generation of knowledge. Because when the people are connecting different data from different places, they share it with each other. When they are sharing this content with each other, they are using the connectivity. You must have seen some QR codes nowadays which we see in the newspaper. QR codes are being used in various places, especially in foreign countries. If you visit museums in the foreign countries, all the exhibits are there with a QR code. If you have a QR code reader on your mobile device, you can read that QR code using your mobile device and then your mobile because it is connected to the internet it downloads all the information related to that exhibit. Just imagine how much more knowledge it is giving you. Connectivity is a very good feature which is provided by mobile which can be used for learning. Usually in schools we refer to text which is in the form of textbooks or encyclopedia but using mobile devices we can explore different formats like audio, video, animation, text. Let's get into the details of these formats which are supported by mobile devices. Let us take a look at the first format which is text. Text can be used to deliver small chunks of content to the students. They can also be used to build an interactivity or for providing support to the students. Small chunks of text can be used to share information with the students in a form of reminders, hints, tips, definitions, any other information that the teacher would like to share with the students. The teacher can create a very small quiz with maybe two to three questions with a small stem and maybe two to three options in it. The students can respond to the quiz by sending the answers to the teacher. This was about small text messages which can be exchanged between the teacher and the students. Teacher can also share text documents or web pages with the students. Now let's take a look at the second format which is audio format. It is popularly called as podcasts. Teacher or the students both can record their own podcast using their mobile phones. Either they can use mobile phones or they can also use their computers to record their audio files. These audio files from the computer can later on be transferred onto the mobile devices. These podcasts can be created for recording literature or stories they can also be used to record interviews of experts. 
Now these activities can be done either by the students or by the teacher. Both can create these resources and share it with each other. Images is the next format. Images are nothing but pictures. When you use your mobile phone to take any picture of anything that you see around you is nothing but image. These images you can share it with your peers or with your teacher. You can also take these images and use them for your project work. Now we have come to the last and the most powerful format which is supported by mobile devices which is videos. Videos are very effectively used for explaining abstract concepts such as structure of an atom, volcanic eruptions, movement of tectonic plates and so on. They can also be used for creating of content. For example, if there is a very intricate surgery, it can be shot using these mobile devices and it could be shared by the expert or that is a world famous doctor can share it with his students. The demo lectures can be shot by the students and shared it with their peer for peer evaluation. So all these formats can be used and exploited by teachers as well as students for better learning. Let us discuss some advantages of mobile learning. One of the major advantages of mobile learning is that it is portable and thus becomes ubiquitous. That is content is available with the learner at all time, anytime and anywhere. Connectivity gives an opportunity to the learners as well as the teachers to create content and also share it with their peers, thus enhancing collaboration. The different formats which are provided by mobile devices also give an experience to the learner of a holistic learning. Now let us discuss challenges which are faced by mobile learners. Internet bandwidth is one of the major challenges which is faced by the mobile learners. To create content which is lighter on bandwidth. Mobile devices are very small devices that is the screen size is pretty small as compared to computers. That is why the content chunk needs to be small which can be fitted at one point in time on the screen. Mobiles also have a very small keypad as compared to the keyboard. Planning interactivities or while planning quizzes ensure that you are not asking your learners to type a lot of content. And of course, short battery life is also one of the major challenges faced by mobile learners. Mobile learning has already started revolutionizing the way every child in our country learns. With this, we have come to the end of our session on mobile learning. Thank you.